Think about the big picture. Don't start spinning your wheels before knowing the final destination, how to get there, and why you're doing it. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. Stay tuned for this week's episode and thanks for listening. Welcome PR Maven Nation to this week's episode, one of our mini episodes, a quick and informative look at the why and how in PR. This podcast is presented by Marshall Communications, creator of the 65-step Marshall Plan process. For more information on the Marshall Plan, visit marshallpr.com and on the website under PR Maven, you'll find information about my two books, PR Works, and Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand. This week, I will be sharing my Forbes Agency Council article, Strategies versus Tactics, Understanding the Why and How in PR. So let's dive right in. In the modern world of public relations, there are so many deliverables that need to get done or edited or promoted. Things are everywhere. So are tasks, daily activities that can easily take hours on end. But the best PR professionals don't get sidetracked by tasks and things. They start with why, to quote author Simon Sinek. If you don't start with why and truly understand what it means, then you'll just end up like a hamster in a wheel, spinning around and around. On a daily basis, ask yourself why. Why are you executing this deliverable? Why are you performing that task? Why do you want your business to be more well-known? Why do you want to network with other people? Why should they care? These are just some examples, but the point is to think strategically in business. It is the only way to succeed. Although it's important, you don't want to just be known as a taskmaster, the person who sends press releases or runs digital ads. You want a task to be part of the overall picture, but not the be-all and end-all. In PR, other people, such as clients or co-workers, should look to you as a strategic mind. You should be considered as a communications strategist or strategic advisor, in addition to the master of tasks who actually secures deliverables. Why are you securing those deliverables in the first place? Is it just to keep clients satisfied or is there a deeper purpose to your work? I can't answer that for you, and neither can you unless the question is asked in the first place. Once you have your why, then you can move on to the how. How will you brainstorm goals and objectives with your coworkers? How will you exceed expectations for your client? The first step in finding the how is to determine your strategy. Let's say the overarching goal of your project is to maximize the visibility of your client. In other words, make them more notable. Perhaps one strategy is to secure earned media at the national level. Maybe it's to gain YouTube subscribers through digital advertising. Strategies are the ways in which you complete objectives and reach the final goal. In this case, increasing public notability. Don't just start listing tactics, such as conducting a press conference or sending out a press release. Don't just come up with posting on Twitter. That's just one tool in a massive toolbox. Comprehending the scope of your toolbox will help you develop strategies and the tactics to fill in the blanks. Think of a strategy as a category with tactics serving as subcategories to flesh it out. One strategy that we deployed on behalf of the Trek Across Maine, a statewide fundraiser for the American Lung Association, was to identify the top fundraisers and supporters. Donor identification and promotion were the strategies in order to encourage fundraisers and supporters to tell their unique stories. Then we got to the tactics. We worked with the donors that we identified to come up with their own key messages based on interests and expertise. We wrote opinion columns and letters to the editor on their behalf, turning talking points into published pieces. 
We pitched them to television stations, radio shows, and print magazines. We curated social media posts and promoted them to a wide range of audiences. In the end, we tied the stories of the Trex brand ambassadors to the ultimate goal of raising money for lung health. The tactics supported the broader strategy of donor identification and promotion, which lent themselves to the end goal of raising awareness about the Trek and raising the money needed to fight lung disease. Currently, we are developing strategies for a retailer in the automotive industry. One example is to position the client's retail store managers as authorities in the field through local media exposure. The purpose is to leverage local news outlets into featuring store managers as thought leaders. This may include message mapping, media training, and more, but it's important not to get lost in the details before coming up with a strategic plan. Being strategic is everything in PR. Think about the big picture. Don't start spinning your wheels before knowing the final destination, how to get there, and why you're doing it. Ironically, my examples had to do with bike wheels and car tires. <laughs> Plan accordingly and you'll reach your destination efficiently and effectively, and your clients will think so too. For more insight, get access to my latest book, Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand, by visiting prmaven.com giveaway and download a free copy today. And here's my friend, Mike Duguay, to share how PR works and Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand have helped him. After reading PR Works, I really started to think about how marketing actually works. And I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but what I realized is that each platform nowadays that we use out there in digital media and social media has its own nuance, uh, nuance and also quirks to it. And understanding how they're used is exceedingly important. Because when you have a hammer in your hand, everything looks like a nail. And you can't approach it that way in marketing. And that's where I think Nancy's brilliance really shined in, in PR works. I think Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand is, is really sort of the manifesto of understanding that there's many different levels to marketing. It's on your personal side of your brand, how actually you ex express yourself through business, but also what people hear you saying and what they see out there in the public eye as well. So I think what's really important there, that's really the blueprint of how you go about using these new social media platforms, but also to express who you are as a human being. Because people want to see you authentically and genuinely working with what not only what you do, but also with the customers. And Nancy, on a personal level, I think she just, she, that's who she is. She embodies that approach. Thanks for listening to this episode of the PR Maven podcast. I invite you to share a review of the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation on Facebook. It's free to join and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you use an Alexa device, use your Alexa app to search the skills and games section to find and enable the PR Maven podcast flash briefing. This will give you access to exclusive content and more PR and marketing advice. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.